from George Ivanovich Gurdjieff's All and Everything, Book 3, Chapter 40. Reading 2. Beelzebub tells how people learned and again forgot about the fundamental cosmic law of Heptapar Parshanok. My personal and exhaustive study of this astonishing apparatus, Ala Atapan, which became, thanks to Gornahur Harhark, famous among the genuine scientists of almost the whole of our megalocosmos, proceeded according to the following chance circumstances. Just at the time of one of my sojourns on the planet Saturn, with my essence friend, Gornahur Harhark, he, having already previously in some way heard about this apparatus, requested me during conversation to bring him one of these experimental apparatuses from the planet Earth, if I again happened to be there. And when, afterwards, I again visited the surface of this planet of yours, I procured there one of these apparatuses and took it with me to the planet Mars, in order to send it on a convenient occasion to the planet Saturn, to Gornahur Harhark. And so, in consequence of the fact that for a long time our ship occasion did not happen to go to the planet Saturn, this apparatus, a la Atapan, remained at my home on the planet Mars, and it often came within the sphere of the automatic perception of the organs of my sight. And during a period of rest from active mentation, I attentively examined it, and ultimately became familiar with all the details of its construction and action. This famous experimental apparatus, a la Atapan, consisted of three independent parts. The fore part was called Lusochipana, the middle part, Zendavok, and the last, the hind part, was called Ryank Pokortars. Each of these three parts in their turn consisted of several special and separate adaptations. The first part, which was named Lusochipana, had a special cone-shaped pipe, the wide end of which was hermetically fitted into a frame of the sole window of that room where the experiments were made and the other end was a small chink-like aperture with what is called a collecting disc, passing through which what are called the rays of daylight coming from the window were transformed into, as your favorites would say, a concentrated white ray. This concentrated white ray, thereupon passing through a crystal of a special form, was broken up into seven different colored rays, which, as is said, fell upon a small slab made of ivory and called pyrangel. This slab, pyrangel, was so constructed and regulated that the colored rays falling on it were again concentrated, but this time otherwise, and proceeding through the second crystal, also of a special form, fell on another but larger slab also made of ivory and called pularish borda. Opposite this Polarish Borda was a small apparatus of a special construction through which, on its being shifted in a certain way, any chosen colored ray there could be directed further from this Polarish Borda onto the third part of the Ala Atapan called Ryank for Cortars. Here, by the way, you might as well also be told that the knowledge relating to the construction of the first crystal of this part of the apparatus Ala Atapan also reached down to your contemporary favorites, and they now call this crystal a prism. Through this prism, contemporary terrestrial learned beings also obtain seven colored rays from the white ray, and they also fancy that through this they can learn about certain other cosmic phenomena. But, of course, from these fancies of theirs and from all kinds of other forms of their scientific titillation, nothing is obtained, only because through this prism of theirs, they obtain from the white ray only what are called negative colored rays. And in order to understand any other cosmic phenomena connected with the transitory changes of this white ray, they must obligatorily have its what are called positive colored rays. Your contemporary favorites, however, imagine that the colored rays which they obtain by means of this child's toy of theirs, called by them prism, are just those same positive rays which the great scientists obtained. And according to their naivety, 
They think that the, as they call it, spectrum which they obtain from the white rays, gives just that order of the arisings of the rays in which they issue from their sources. And meanwhile, in the given case, concerning these terrestrial, sorry scientists of new formation, among your favorites, one can only utter the expression often used by them themselves, to hell with them. It is not for nothing that several of our sacred individuals in general do not call your contemporary favorites otherwise than freaks. And so, thanks to these two crystals, these great learned beings obtained from the white ray its positive colored rays, and afterwards, with the help of the slab Pularish Borda, which was a part of the Luso Chipana, any one of these colored rays was directed to the third and principal demonstrating part of the astonishing apparatus, namely to the Rianc Pocortars. This principal part, however, consisted of an ordinary three-legged stand, on the top of which two balls, also of ivory, were fitted one upon the other in a certain way, the upper ball being much larger than the lower one. On the lower, smaller ball, just opposite that part of the Lusuchapana through which the positive colored rays had already passed, a cavity of a special form was made, into which either the whole of the said polar medectian product named opium, or single active elements required for the experiments were placed during the experiments. Now the upper ball was bored right through diametrically, horizontal to the Lusochipana, and on this large ball there was also radially perpendicular to this large bore, drilled right through, yet another smaller bore reaching only to the center, and which was just opposite the Lusochipana. This second bore, drilled halfway through, was made in such a way that the colored rays could be directed as desired, either directly from the Lusichapana, or reflected from the said cavity of the lower, smaller ball. Through the open bore of the large ball, a what is called bamboo, previously prepared in a special manner, could be freely moved. A long time before the experiments, many of these bamboos were soaked together in absolute darkness or in, as is said there on the earth, orange light, obtained from the burning of simkalash, which was obtained from a certain kind of what is called clay, deposited in the soil of your planet, and the deposits of which are usually found near accumulations of saluinilovian acids, which in their turn are formed from mamzolin, or as your favorites call it, naphtha. These bamboos were soaked in a liquid consisting of, one, the white of the eggs of the bird, then called Amer Samar Skanapa, two, the juice of the plant called Chiltunak, three, the excretion of a quadruped being bearing the name Kesmaral, and four, a specially prepared what is called Mercury Amalgam. When these bamboos had been thoroughly soaked, they were inserted one by one, into other, thicker bamboos, which had not been prepared in the said manner, and the ends of which were hermetically sealed. These latter preparations were, of course, also made in absolute darkness, or in the orange light of Simkalash. Later, when these soaked bamboos were necessary for the experiment, one end of the thicker, unsoaked bamboo was inserted in a special way into the mentioned bore, drilled right through the large ball of the Rianc for Cortars, and opened by a small hook fixed to a thin stick, by means of which the soaked bamboo could be moved at any speed desired. Now the action of the said liquid in which the bamboo was soaked was such that the part of the soaked bamboo on which the colored ray coming directly from the Lusochipana, or, after being reflected from the cavity of the lower, smaller ball, fell, was instantly permanently dyed the same color as that ray which had fallen onto it. The uncovered places of these bamboos soaked in the said manner were dyed the colors also corresponding to the sound vibrations which touched them, and which were obtained from what are called strings, which were on the middle part of the apparatus called Zendvok. This Zendvok 
consisted of a very strong frame, of special form, made from the tusks of mammoths, on which there were stretched many strings of various lengths and thicknesses, made partly from the twisted what are called goat's intestines, and partly from the tail hairs of beings there of various exterior forms. "'Tell me, please, my dear grandfather, what is a mammoth?' asked Hassan. "'A mammoth,' replied Beelzebub, "'is a two-brained being. "'In the beginning it also bred on your planet, "'and had, in comparison with other beings there, "'of all brain systems, a large exterior form. "'This kind of being also became a victim "'of the consequences of that large piece "'broken off from the planet Earth and now called Moon, "'which is now an independent, as I expressed it, planetary upstart of this solar system, Urs, and the chief bearer of evil to this ill-fated planet of yours. The point is that when the atmosphere of this small planetary upstart began to be formed and became gradually harmonized, great winds arose in the atmosphere of the planet Earth, owing to which several regions of its surface, you remember, I have already spoken about this to you, were buried with sand. Moreover, at this time, snow constantly fell in what are called the north and south polar regions of its atmosphere, and all the depressions of the surface of these north and south polar terra firma regions were covered by these falls of snow. The beings of this exterior form used to breed on the mentioned regions of the terra firma surface of your planet, and during these unprecedented, as is said there, snowstorms, they were all also buried by snow, and since then this species of beings has never again been re-established there. It is interesting to notice that at the present time there, in these depressions formerly covered with snow, and which were later covered with kashimon, that is, with those substances which in general form on the surface of terra firma regions what is called soil, there are sometimes still found now even well-preserved planetary bodies of these mammoths. These planetary bodies of mammoths have been so well-preserved for such a long time because these snows were then very soon after covered with Kashiman, and thus there obtained the condition of Isolias Soklanis. That is, as your favorites would say, the condition of a hermetically closed sphere, in which these planetary bodies of mammoths have never since been exposed, as is said there, to decomposition, that is to say, the active elements of which these planetary bodies are in general formed, have not completely evolved back to their prime origin. And so, my boy, the astonishing apparatus Ala Atapan, which I described, demonstrated that all the three mentioned transitory results of cosmic processes not only manifest themselves alike in their inner manifestations, but that they are also formed from the same factors. By means of this apparatus, it was possible to verify and be convinced that in each of the mentioned three transitory results ensuing from common cosmic processes, and which have nothing in common outwardly with each other, there not only proceeds exactly similar what are called mutual actions ensuing one from the other and forming one common functioning, and that, in the sense of the evolutionary and involutionary particularities of the law of Heptaparaparshanuk, the action of each separate intermediary stage in one general functioning influences the action of each separate intermediary stage in another, exactly as in its own, but also that according to the particularities of the properties of the vibrations which compose their aggregate, these transitory cosmic results have complete affinity. This complete affinity in the inner mutual relations of these three transitory results which have outwardly nothing in common with each other, was proved in the following way. For instance, a corresponding colored ray directed upon any active element of opium transformed it 
into another active element, which corresponded in its newly acquired vibrations to the vibrations of the colored ray, which had acted on the given active element. The same result was obtained if, instead of these colored rays, corresponding sound vibrations of the strings of the Zendvok were directed upon this same active element. Further, if any colored ray were made to pass through any active element of opium, then passing through it, this same ray took on another color, namely, that color, the vibrations of which corresponded to the vibrations of this active element. Or, if any colored ray were made to pass through the manifested what are called wave of sound vibrations, still acting at that given moment, from any corresponding string of the Zendvok, then passing through this wave, it took on another color corresponding to the vibrations manifested by means of the given string. Or finally, if a definite colored ray and definite sound vibration from the strings were simultaneously directed upon any active element of opium from among those composing this polar medectian product, and which had a smaller number of vibrations than the totality of vibrations of the colored ray and of the said sound, then this active element was transformed into such another active element of opium, the number of whose vibrations exactly corresponded to the totality of the numbers of the said two differently caused vibrations, and so on and so forth. This incomparable experimental apparatus likewise demonstrated that all the higher vibrations of one result always give the direction to all the lower vibrations of other transitory cosmic results. After all that has just now been related to you, my boy, you can now be given that information thanks to which there might be crystallized in your mentation data for the representation into what general form the results of the tenacious, impartial, conscious labors of these saints, the twin brothers, the terrestrial great scientists, were then molded in this China. And in addition, also, data for the representation concerning the degrees of the successive deterioration of being reason in the presences of these unfortunate terrestrial three-brained beings. And so, when for the second time from my observations of the existence of these three-brained beings who have taken your fancy, there arose on this still quite young China, thanks to the mentioned two great terrestrial scientists, the twin brothers, an independent branch of genuine science, that is, the totality of the information concerning the special question, thoroughly cognized by perfected reason of three-brained beings who had existed earlier, in the given case concerning the fundamental cosmic law of the sacred Heptaparaparshnuk, then called the law of ninefoldness, then this branch of science was not only handed down almost normally in an unchanged form from generation to generation during the first two to three centuries, counting from the time of the sacred Rasguarnu of the great twin brothers, but it even gradually became, thanks to their followers, also genuine learned beings of that period, as it is said, detailized, and became accessible to the perception of even ordinary beings. This proceeded then chiefly because the practice, which had been established by the learned beings of the continent Atlantis, of handing down such information to the beings of subsequent generations only through beings who were genuine initiates still continued among them. I must not fail, my boy, to remark and acknowledge with conviction that indeed if such an already long-established practice had continued, though automatically, in the process of the existence of these unfortunate three-brained beings who have taken your fancy, then, in the given case, just such a totality of true information, already thoroughly cognized by the reason of their still relatively normal ancestors, might have remained intact, and might also have become 
the possession of your contemporary favorites, and those of them who constantly strive not to become ultimate victims of the consequences of the, for them, accursed organ kundabuffer, might take advantage of this information with the aim of easing their already almost impossible what is called inner struggle. To the regret of all more or less conscious, relatively independent, separate individuals of our great megalocosmos, and to the misfortune of all subsequent three-brained beings who arose on this ill-fated planet of yours during the mentioned period, namely, during two to three of their centuries, the gradual distortion and ultimate, almost total destruction began of just that blessing which had been created for them by their great ancestors thanks to their conscious labors and intentional sufferings. This followed from two causes. The first cause was that, thanks to the same abnormal conditions of external being existence established by them themselves, certain of them were formed into responsible beings with that special organic psychic need which in their speech might be formulated thus. An irresistible thirst to be considered as learned by beings around them similar to themselves. And such a psychic, organic need began to engender in them that strange inherency about which I have many times spoken and which is called by them cunning wiseacring. By the way, my boy, bear in mind once for all that when I used and will use the expression learned beings of new formation, I referred and will refer to those of your favorites the learned beings just mentioned by me, who have this specific inherency. The other cause was that thanks at that period to certain external circumstances not depending on them, and which ensue from common cosmic processes, chiefly owing to the action of the law of Solionensius, the being data crystallized in them which engendered the impulses of what are called sensing and foreseeing began to weaken in the common presences of the genuine initiated beings, and they began to take such newly formed types, as I have just described, and to initiate them into some of the totalities of the true information known to them alone, among which was also that totality I mentioned. And from that time on, this branch of genuine knowledge, which had already at that time become the possession of most of them, gradually began to be distorted and was ultimately, again, nearly quite forgotten. I employed the word almost when I referred to the ultimate, almost, total destruction of that blessing because some fragments from the whole totality of this, in the objective sense, important true information, nevertheless began, after the lapse of the mentioned period there, when their relatively normal process of being existence was again re-established, to be again handed down to subsequent generations, exclusively only through genuine initiates, and being handed down by succession from generation to generation, reached unchanged even to your contemporary favorites, though to a very limited number of them. There remained, however, as the possession of most of your contemporary favorites, from all this true knowledge which had already been attained and thoroughly cognized by their great remote ancestors, those several practical, unimportant fragments which had automatically reached them, and which, in the mentioned confused period, were very widely spread among most of the ordinary beings of this then still quite young China. Among those unimportant fragments which automatically reached most of the contemporary favorites of yours, there are, firstly, several methods of separating from the polar medectian product named opium certain of its independent active elements, secondly, what is called the law of combination of colors, and thirdly, what is called the seven-toned scale of sound. As regards the first of the enumerated three fragments of the practical results, attained by the reason of three-brained beings 
of this ancient China, and which reached to your contemporary favorites, it is necessary to tell you that, in consequence of the fact that certain of the constituent parts of this whole product, called their opium, became from then on, thanks to the special properties of their agreeable action on the abnormal general psyche of the beings, to be continuously used by them. Therefore, the knowledge of many methods of getting certain of its independent active elements began to be transmitted from generation to generation and reached down to your contemporary favorites. And at the present time, they also obtain many of its definite parts and use them very avidly for the satisfaction of always the same consequences of the properties of the organ Kunda buffer crystallized in them. These parts extracted by them from the general composition of this polar medectian product have, of course, already other names among your contemporary favorites. A contemporary comical learned chemist, a certain Mendelehev, even collected the names of all those active elements, now obtained and classified them, as it were, according to their atomic weights. Although his classification does not correspond at all to reality, yet nevertheless, according to these atomic weights of his, it is possible approximately to establish that classification which was then made by the great terrestrial learned beings of the future China. Of the number of nearly 400 active elements of opium, which then became known to the great brothers, knowledge of how to obtain only 42 active elements has reached the contemporary chemists of the earth, and these active elements have now the following names there. Morphine, protopine, lanthopine, porphyrixine, opium or nicotine, paramorphine or thebane, formine or pseudoformine, metamorphine, noscopine, oilopine, atropine, pyrotine, defterapine, tictutine, colatine, kievatine, zutine, trotopine, laudanine, laudanazine, podoterine, arcatazine, tokitosine, lictinosine, maganadine, popovarine, crintonine, codamine, colomonine, coilinonine, caternine, hydrocatarnine, opionine, or meconine, meconoisine, pistotorine, phyctonosine, codine, nartzine, pseudoconine, microperine, microtibane, mesane. The last time I was on your planet, I heard that the contemporary learned beings of the community of Germany found, as it were, methods of separating several other independent active elements from opium. But as I had already become convinced before this, that the contemporary scientists of that community, firstly, for the most part, only fantasy, and secondly, like the beings of ancient Greece, do not prepare anything good or beneficial for future generations. I therefore did not interest myself in these, as it were, new, as they also call them scientific attainments, and do not know the names of these new active elements of the present day. As regards the second fragment of the practical results attained by the reason of the same beings of ancient China, and which has reached down to contemporary beings, namely the knowledge relating to the law of the combination of colors, then all the information concerning this has been handed down almost all the time from generation to generation, but each year it always underwent a greater change for the worse and was only two centuries ago ultimately forgotten. At the present time, some information relating to this law still continues to pass down and to become known only to certain of the three-brained beings there who belong to the group of beings there named Persians, but now that the influence of what is called contemporary European paintings is automatically spreading more and more widely in this group, then one must, of course, expect there the speedy and also total, as our esteemed teacher says, 
evaporation of this information. And as regards the seven-toned scale of sound, which had reached them from the ancient Chinese beings, then you must be informed about this as detailedly as possible, because first of all, thanks to this information, you will better understand about the laws of vibrations, in which all the peculiarities of the sacred Heptaparaparshanuk can be constated and cognized, and secondly, because among those things intentionally reproduced by those same three-brained beings of yours who have taken your fancy for daily use in their general existence, I brought home from there also one sound-producing instrument, named there piano, on which the vibration-engendering strings were placed which could be arranged just as on the Zendavok. That is, the second special part of the famous experimental apparatus, Ala Atapan, which was created by the great twin brothers, and on which, when we return unto our dear Caritas, I shall be able to explain to you by demonstration what is called the successiveness of the processes of the mutual blending of vibrations. Thanks to these practical explanations of mine, you will more easily be able to represent to yourself, and approximately to cognize, just how and in which successiveness in our great megalocosmos, the process of the most great trago auto egocrat proceeds, and in what way the large and small cosmic concentrations arise. Relating about how such a fragment of practical result from the ancient true knowledge survived and automatically reached down to your contemporary favorites, I shall first of all elucidate to you with more accuracy about this same definite law of vibrations which was first formulated by the great brothers as the seven gravity center vibrations of sound. 